All right, welcome back. 9.3 slicing 3D solids for today. So I am again going to keep my video open just for this one. I'll push it out at the very end here. Um, we're going to talk today about slicing solids and I'm going to show this um, video, but then there's also going to be a second part that goes along with it, which is like slicing a, a block of cheese. So that's just kind of another visual one um, to help you out here. So we are going to talk today about taking our three-dimensional solids, and we're going to actually be slicing them. So we're going to cut them. So when we talk about um, slicing these things, when we actually cut them, when we open up our solids then, and we're able to actually take a look at the flat shape that gets formed by the shape of our cut, we call that part a cross section. So it's basically if we're going to take out like a little slice of it and take a look at what flat shape that's going to make. So your cross section is your two dimensional flat shape view that's formed by slicing through a solid figure. Overall, there's about three different ways that we can slice our solids. We can make a slice that's going to be parallel to our base. So if my base is over here, my slice is going to be right here. If my, it's sitting on the base, my slice is going to go horizontally across like this. The other option for us to do, which is the most common ones that we see, are going to be perpendicular to the base. So if my base is across, I'm coming down in and chopping at a 90 degree angle. If my base is here on the side, I'm going to come in and still chop at a 90 degree angle to that base. There are some other ones that we have um, that are going to be perpendicular to bases and just kind of in different spots. But the other thing that we can also do is, for example, if we had a cube, we could come in and we could actually take off like an angled slice. So we would actually chop through and you can see like right here we would slice through this part right here. And that would be an angled slice for us. It's not really perpendicular or parallel to any of the bases. So we do have some of those special situations. If you are in your notes packet and you take a look at page number seven, or page number six, excuse me, um, we have this chart that's gonna have a couple different pieces for us. It shows us a picture first of our 3D solid. After it shows us our 3D solid, it's going to show us what a slice that would be parallel to the base is going to look like. I have a couple of these actually shown so that are actually cut, so I'll be able to actually share that with you. Um, some that I'm not going to be able to share with you, but we're going to have to just kind of look at and sort of imagine here. So the first one that we see here is actually a cone. So if we go parallel to the base, the base of a cone is a circle. If we go exactly parallel to that, we are still going to actually see a circle. It's going to match what our base is. So because of that, we're going to have a circle. If you want to put the words instead, that's perfectly fine with me too. If we come in and we have our cone sitting flat and we actually chop perpendicular to that base, we're going to be chopping down through these two sides. And I apologize, it's kind of hard to write on here. We'll be chopping down through these two sides and then also across that bottom. So our cross section here is going to actually end up being a triangle. For cylinder, I actually have an example of this next one that I'll share with you here. So if we have a cylinder, here's our cylinder. We have a circle on the top and bottom, and it goes all the way around. We actually chop through that center piece, and then we open it up. We're going to be able to see a circle. That's going to be our flat cross section here. And again, because it's parallel to the base, it's going to match exactly what our base is. So this is going to create for us a circle. On the other hand, if we actually take this, so we have our cylinder, we're going to chop perpendicular to the base, we're going to cut straight through. When I cut straight through and then I open up, notice that I'm going to actually see a rectangle here. It makes sense because we're cutting through four different sides. We're cutting through the top, the bottom, and then the two sides that go down over here. I understand that they're not flat, but it's still a surface and we're still cutting through. So because of that, it's going to create for us a rectangle when we cut down through perpendicular to our base here. At the bottom of your page, you still have a couple more. I've reprinted the titles for it so we could actually kind of keep track of them here. So we have for our first one, a triangular prism. The base of a triangular prism is a triangle. So when I cut parallel to the base, remember it's gonna actually match exactly what my base is. So parallel to the base on a triangular prism is going to give us a triangle. If I'm cutting perpendicular to the base, I'm coming in at a 90 degree angle to my base, which is here actually a triangle. When I cut that, I'm going to cut through the front, cut through the back, and also cut through the two sides. So that's a total of four sides that I'm cutting through. When I do that and I open it up here, you're going to see, I'm going to try and separate these a little bit, um, you can see that we actually have a rectangle then that results here. We're going through those four different sides. So our cross section here is going to end up being a rectangle. For um, our almost last one here, we have a rectangular prism. 
And this one, I don't actually have ones of, which is kind of goofy. Um, but when we chop through the rectangular prism parallel to the base, we're just going to get a rectangle that actually matches the base. And when we chop perpendicular to the base, we're going to be going through the top, the bottom, and the two sides. So we're still going to actually end up with a rectangle that matches. Our last one is talking about a square pyramid. I do have this one for you. So going perpen or parallel to the base, excuse me, if our base is a square, and here's my little square pyramid, whoops, 3D printed here for you. So if my base is actually the square, if I actually cut through, so I separate off the top of this, so taking that little piece off, you'll notice that when I look at both of the sides here, I actually have a little square. Now, because the actual pyramid, it's going to get, the square is going to get smaller and smaller as I go towards the top. It depends on where I cut on my pyramid, how large my square is going to be. But for us, this one's showing it a little bit further up the top. So that square is actually going to be smaller than what our actual base is. The closer that you are down to the base, the closer it's going to be to the actual size of the base. If we take that square pyramid, and we actually cut through the top. So you can see my tape line down here. That would be our cut through. We're cutting through these two sides that are right here as well as across the bottom. And that is going to actually create for us a triangle then. So that goes straight through and also cuts through right at that very vertex top as well. One other thing that can happen is if we actually cut through perpendicular to the base, but we go closer to one of our base edges, we're going to get a cut that's going to actually look like this. So you can see where my cut actually happens on my square pyramid here. And when I cut this and I open it up, I actually get a trapezoid. It's still going through four parts because it's going through the outside, it's going through the bottom, and then those two sides, but it's smaller towards the top and then larger towards the bottom, more as I get closer to my base. So that would actually give me a trapezoid depending on where I actually made that cut. The picture that's demonstrated here does go through the vertex, so that tells us that we have a triangle that we're cutting through. So there's a couple notes that happen here. And angled slices are kind of the more complicated pieces. You kind of have to take a look at them and see what's going on to the best that you can in the picture. If you are able to kind of mess around with a 3D you know, simulator, I'll actually share a link out for you for one that you can take a look at with some different slices. Move the plane that actually slices it and you, know, you can take a look at the different solids as well. But depending on how many sides of the solid that you slice through, that is going to be the number of sides that your two-dimensional cross-section will have. So for example, if you remember when we chopped through that square pyramid, we went through the two sides and then also the bottom, which meant that we ended up with a triangle for our cross section. For example, if I take this cube and I chop through here, I'm going to cut through the top as well as these two sides. And that means since I went through three sides, I'm going to actually see a triangle when I take off that kind of back corner that's over here of, exact, of our cube. So there's a couple examples that are here on page seven in your notes packet. If you cut through three sides of the rectangular prism, you can see your cross section going to be a triangle if you're taking that corner off. If you are able to cut through five sides, you're gonna actually see a pentagon shape. So from a cube, you would be able to actually create a cross section of a pentagon. If you cut through all six sides, you can actually create a hexagon cross section by cutting through all six different sides of the cube. And that's demonstrated down here with this picture for you to be able to see. It is possible to do that. So as long as it has that number of sides, you can cut through that number of sides and you'll actually be able to create that shape as your cross section then. So the last thing that we can do with cross sections is to go through and actually calculate the area of our cross sections. That is kind of our second step in the whole entire process. So the first step is to figure out what does our cross section look like. Second step would be to figure out the area. So in example number one here on page seven in your packet, it says determine the area of a cross section parallel to the base. Because I'm going to be parallel to the base, it means that I'm going to actually match the base. And the base here is a circle. It's a circle that in fact has a radius of six. So if I'm finding my area, my formula is pi r squared. My radius is gonna be six. So if I do this, I'm gonna get 36 pi. And we can multiply 36 times 3.14, which will give us 113.04. And we're gonna put this label as square inches. Area of a cross section perpendicular to the base. It means we're gonna be coming through since my base is on the bottom and chopping like this. When I do that, I'm going to be following down the side here. I'm gonna be going all the way across and then back up this side. So I'll actually be getting a triangle. 
The radius is three, which means if I'm going all the way across, that is going to be six inches. I do see the height in here. For a triangle, my formula is area is equal to half times base times height. So my base is six and my height is nine. That's going to give me an area of 27, and my units are going to be inches cubed then. In example number three, we're going to determine the area of a cross section parallel to the base. My first task is to figure out what the base is. And the base here actually happens to be this rectangular shape. However, it is a compound shape, so it's going to be up to me to figure out the area of that base because my cross section is going to match it. I'm going to recommend that we chop off across here. This top part is going to be 2 feet by 4 feet, so area is length times width, so area is 2 times 4, which is going to be 8. Across the bottom here, it's 2 feet and 7 feet, so length times width. Length is technically 7, our width is 2, so my area is 14. So the area of my base is going to be that up and down rectangle plus that side to side one. Remember doing this in the last unit, 8 plus 14 which is going to give me a total of 22 feet, and that's going to be squared because we're finding area. In example four, we're going to determine the area of a cross section parallel to the base. The base here is a tri uh, rectangle, excuse me, it looks like its sides are different, so we have 18 and 12, and the only problem is that we don't know are we cutting it down here, or are we going to cut it up top here? So we actually cannot find the area, because we need to know dimensions. And the reason that we are not able to figure out those dimensions is because we don't know where exactly we're going to be cutting it. So as it moves to the top or down to the bottom, then we have to be able to take a look at that.